earthworms are crucial to global grain production. Earthworms are an important driver of global food production, according to a recent study. They contribute about 6.5% world cereal production and approximately 2.3% legume production. Scientists from Colorado State University have determined how much earthworms contribute to global food production. According to the first global estimate of the contribution of invertebrates to food production, earthworms provide us with over 140 million tons of food each year. For the wheat harvest alone, this is roughly equivalent to one slice for each loaf of bread, or as much as Russia, the world's fourth largest producer, produces annually. These analyzes were published in the journal Nature Communications. Every farmer knows how valuable earthworms are. They help break down dead matter releasing nutrients into the soil that plants need to grow. However, they do it much faster than soil microorganisms. Moreover, the corridors they drill contribute to loosening the soil and increasing the amount of air and water contained in it. Most people know these creatures very well. They can most often be found after rain, when they come to the surface. If they have the right conditions, they can occur in great abundance, up to 700 individuals per cubic meter of soil. To quantify how much earthworms are increasing food production around the world, Stephen Font of Colorado State University and colleagues analyzed where the creatures were found and their abundance. The researchers compared this data with maps of agricultural yields, soil properties and the amount of fertilizer used. They also included estimates of increased plant productivity. For the study, Font and his colleagues analyzed the effects of earthworms on four grain crops – rice, corn, wheat and barley. Scientists also examined the effects of these creatures on legumes. The analyzers covered soybean, pea, chickpea, lentil and alfalfa crops. The analysis showed that earthworms have a significant impact on grain production around the world. They are responsible for 6.5% world grain harvests such as rice, wheat and corn. The share is smaller, about 2%. In the case of legumes, including soybeans and lentils, the share of production is higher, especially in the global south, as the scientists called it in the publication. In sub-Saharan Africa, these animals account for approximately 10%. Cereal production in turn, in Latin America and the Caribbean, scholars estimated this share at approximately 8%. Fonta noted that in these regions, the high share of earthworms in agricultural production is due to the fact that farmers there have limited access to artificial fertilizers and must rely on the soil where these animals occur. Font also said soil quality has been underestimated in the past, and he hopes this work will bring more attention to how healthy soils can have a positive, measurable impact on crops. He also noted that other recent studies have shown that soils contain as much as half of the world's biodiversity. Soil is 
the Buras complicated habitat. But until now, there hasn't really been any attempt to understand what this biodiversity means for global crops. If we manage our soils more sustainably, we can make better use of their biodiversity and create more sustainable agroecosystems. This work highlights the existing potential, Font admitted, adding that proper soil management can increase agricultural productivity and reduce the use of artificial fertilizers and pesticides. But this research is important not only for agriculture. They may influence ways of dealing with drought or soil erosion. Earthworms can improve soil porosity by helping to capture and retain water. Mercury continues to contract. Scientists have known for decades that mercury has shrunk in radius by about 7 kilometers since its formation. Despite being the closest planet to the Sun, its interior loses heat. New research suggests that mercury is still shrinking, but it is unknown how long this process will take. Mercury is the smallest and closest planet in the solar system to our star. It orbits the Sun every 88 days. It has a trace atmosphere and its surface with numerous impact craters resembles the Moon. The temperature on the surface oscillates between minus 183 degrees Celsius and 427 degrees Celsius. The planet has no natural satellites. It can be seen with the naked eye. But due to its proximity to the Sun, Observations from Earth will only be possible just before sunrise or just after sunset. Mercury, even though it has been known to mankind since ancient times, is one of the least explored planets in the solar system and hides several secrets from us. Scientists have been puzzled by the planet's surprisingly high density for years. In addition, Mercury has its own magnetic field, being the only rocky planet in the solar system apart from Earth. But there's something else. Mercury is shrinking and it has been happening for a long time. The first evidence of this process was obtained by the Mariner 10 probe sent by NASA in 1974. It noticed numerous cracks on the planet's surface, as well as several kilometer high slopes and faults winding for hundreds of kilometers. In turn, the Messenger probe, which studied Mercury in 2011 to 2015, showed many more formations of this type. The collected photos helped measure the length and height of slopes and faults, which allowed us to conclude that these formations are a reaction to the reduction of Mercury's radius, i.e. The planet has changed its size. In addition, traces of the contraction of Mercury's crust are visible in the numerous impact craters covering the planet's surface, which have lost their original shape. In 2014, astronomers determined that Mercury had shrunk by about 7 kilometers in radius since its formation about 4 billion years ago. New research offers a fresh look at this process.
Analyses published in Nature Geoscience showed that this process has not stopped and the shrinkage is still ongoing. As Mercury's interior shrinks, its crust has less and less surface area to cover. It reacts to this by creating slopes and faults. When one area of land is pushed into the neighboring one, admitted David Rothery from the Open University, co-author of the publication, in the conversation. It's like the wrinkles that form on an apple as it ages, except that the apple shrinks because it dries out, while mercury shrinks because it loses heat from inside it, he added. But when did it happen? The accepted way to determine the age of Mercury's surface is to calculate the density of impact craters. The older the surface, the more craters there are. This method is questionable, however, because in the distant past the rate of impact causing craters was much greater. However, it was clear to scientists that the formations visible on Mercury were ancient. Although they intersect some of the oldest craters, they also contain many younger craters. Previously, researchers determined that the age of these formations is about 3 billion years. However, in a new study, Scientists found evidence that the planet's contraction is not over yet and that Mercury continues to cool. So far, the evidence has been scanned. However, our team found clear signs that many scarps and faults have moved in recent geological times, Rothery said. Ben Mann from the Open University found cracks in photos of slopes. Further analyzes revealed that it is a type of geological depression that covers a narrow, sunken, elongated fragment of the area. Such formations, researchers admitted, usually appear when the planet's crust is stretched. The stretching may seem surprising on Mercury, where the crust is compressing, Rothery explained. But man realized that these formations would appear if a piece of crust was bent as it was pushed above the adjacent terrain. If you try to bend a piece of toast, it may break in a similar way. He added, the geological depressions spotted on Mercury's surface are less than a kilometer wide and less than 100 meters deep. Such relatively small formations must be much younger than those on which they appeared. Scientists have calculated that these depressions are less than 300 million years old. 